Good afternoon, friends. Welcome to another Options Recap. I hope you had a great trading day, and we're going to be breaking down the trading methods and looking at some of the setups and talking about how the day went and um, just having a great time overall and um, welcome again. So first and foremost, why don't you go ahead, let me know where you are tuning in from tonight. Let me throw some of your names up on the screen to show you guys some appreciation uh, for coming out. All right. And let me just check the audio. Let me throw some. Okay. Audio is good to go. Boom. We got right here a donation right off the bat. Jonathan Brassfield with the two dollars. J JB Brassfield from Alexandria, Louisiana, brother. Amazing. I actually want to visit Louisiana, man. One day, definitely want to. Sylvia from Miami. Melly from Singapore. Margie from Santa Rosa. You know, I actually have a lot of students from Singapore that are in the room. I uh, man, Singapore people. I'm so happy you guys are here, man. Um, here we go. Margie from Santa Rosa. Where were we? Penny from Vancouver. Glenn from New York, Vanzi from Texas, Numian from DC, Orain from Calgary, and let's do one more. So this brother up here, Alandaliza from Dubai, Al Alian. I can't do it. I did my best, brother. Sorry for butchering your name. I'm sorry. All right, welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome. So let's start off right the bat and um, let's start off with the spy. Okay, we're going to start off with spy. That's, you know, the bread and butter that I've been looking at these days. And uh, you could see that we had a huge gap up right off of the open. So we had this big gap up. So definitely, um, you know, one thing that I want to talk to you guys about is when you're trading, a lot of times in the stock market or just in, you know, in any type of investments, money is kind of made when you're sleeping. So what do I mean by that? In the stock market, there is a statistic that shows a lot of the times there's going to be movements that happen overnight. And this is represented by a gap on the chart. So you could see from the night, from overnight session to the morning, we have basically had buyers step in and push this market higher. So if you are a day trader, it's going to be extremely difficult for you to capitalize on that movement because you're not in the position. And that's why I always have a mixture of day trades and swing trades going on. Okay. I always have a mixture of day trades and swing trades going on because I really want to make sure that if there is anything any type of movement that happens overnight, I want to be a part of it. And, you know, so that also works the other way, right? Sometimes it could be against you. But as long as you're position sizing okay and you're not over leveraging, you should be fine. And I'm actually going to go to AMD real quick. And that's kind of what I did today on AMD. Even though the gap on AMD was not that big, I still benefited from this gap up overnight with the options that I played. And while I'm here, man, let's why don't we just go do this recap real quick on AMD. So let me... I didn't get an, enough time to explain this in detail, but uh, let's start right here today, okay? So here we go. So AMD, we had this weekly inside bar. So first question to you, what do you guys think are happening to the option premiums when AMD for one whole week is just basically going sideways? You can see here's the previous week and the previous week before that and the week before that. So look at this, basically four weeks of going horizontal. So what do you think is happening to those option premiums um, in this inside week, are they increasing or are they decaying? What do you guys think? I see shred, shredding, decaying. Exactly. So, so this is what I do. So I'm, I came in here and I drew the high like that and the low of the range. So now what I did is I went down to the daily chart and I'm looking for, oh, I'm looking for an entry before we break this this high and low. So if we go to so the first candle that came in was this inverted hammer and then the next candle that came in was this inside bar. Okay? So I actually set up the order to get in above this inside bar. So the high of this inside bar is 10604. So I set a conditional order. So the conditional order said fill me on the calls 
when we are above the high of this inside bar. And you can see the next day we gapped up above the high. So because I had the conditional orders that they triggered at the market. So essentially what I did, guys, is I used the drill down method. This is the drill down method, guys. This is from my book. This is why I wrote a whole book on drill down. This is what I mean. We start off with the range. We drill down to a lower time frame, and then we try to get into the moves before they break out. Okay? So hit me with a one if you if you have your book here and you're ready to rock and roll and you understand what I'm talking about. Hit me with a one. Okay? Normally, when we day trade, we start off with the daily chart, and then we go down to the 5 and the 15-minute chart to drill down. Normally. But when we're swing trading, I like to start off with the weekly or the monthly, and then I want to drill down to the daily or hourly. Okay? So there it is. And then today we had another, bam, there we go. So I was able to get um, the 107 calls for next week. So I actually, like I said, I got the, the calls for next week. I got them at $2.11, and right now they, they almost hit $6. Okay. And I would, the reason why I wanted to take calls here was because I was looking for a play to break all time highs. So I'm still anticipating potentially by the end of next week, if things go pretty, you know, if, if the market continues to, um, to bounce bullish that we could take out this all time high. So that's why I played AMD only to the bullish side, not to the bearish side. All right. So there we go. So let's get back to SPY. Let's talk about it now. Um, and let's talk about the gap up, what to do. So SPY, a lot of the times, guys, when we have a gap up, we are not going to, we're going to not have a big move intraday, meaning that we're going to kind of stay sideways, slowly drift up, or we're going to fill the gap. One of those two things are going to happen. And generally what we can see here is that you know, we just kind of, we kind of just pushed vertically up, not by a significant amount, but, you know, just drifted slowly up. Like the candles weren't too explosive and powerful. We, they were small candles and slowly dragging themselves up. Okay. So right off the bat, guys, the first five minute bar, we had this opening range breakout, which is a valid play. Definitely a valid play. So the first five minute bar, we break the low. Okay. This, it doesn't, it doesn't give you too much, right? Um, and that's fine because a lot of the times we could fill the gap or we could come halfway into the gap. So that orb is a loser, which is totally okay. So don't even, don't, don't beat yourself up on that if you took that one. But what I, what I did say guys, is I always focus on three time frames: the three minute, the five minute and the 15, right? So if you look at this 15 minute orb, this 15 minute orb was way better. The 15 minute orb gave you a beautiful high, uh, a doji with a high wick and a low wick. So it gave you a great entry right there and the break of that high, the 15 minute orb was the most, you know, very clean. Five minute was a little bit more difficult today. So what happened in the room was we had the triggers here for long and trigger here for short. So because we gapped up above the trigger, we never touched the trigger. So we never got into a trigger trade. And this first inside bar right here, guys, was a loser right off the bat. Okay. So that one, we broke down and we reversed. But this outside bar, guys, I was able to catch this one. So I took this outside bar down for a one-to-one, -one, and I gave out some live shout callouts in the room. But that outside bar, got it for a one-to-one. -one. Anytime you're going against the gap, so let's say you gap up and you're trying to fade it, you have to be very careful with your targets. You have to be very, very careful. You can't ask for, you got to take some profits and move the stop up. You can't ask for a lot because you're going against the power. And after that outside bar, guys, I was done. I didn't play anything else because... I was in a lot of swing trades and I made good money. I made close to like nine or 10,000 unrealized gains today on my swings and I'm still holding them. So AMD was one of my big ones. PayPal was one of my big ones. Um, I'm going to do a, a separate video on PayPal because I did like an investing strategy with that one because I, I, I believe in the company long term. And um, CRM, I'm going to show you guys that one right now. Okay. Boom. Right here, Rich, you are the real deal. I'm telling everyone I know who will listen. My trading has been constantly profitable since I found you and I learned your strategies and indicators. Thanks. Thank you, brother. Jonathan, man, I appreciate that a lot, brother. I, I see you in the room. I see you grinding, man. Thank you so much for the donation, brother. Um, all right, so let's look at the CRM swing pick. I just wanted to do this one before I forget. 
um, and I'll give you guys some knowledge behind the, the play, okay? I I still can't believe that. I, I still can't believe that this is what happened to the chart. Um, I, I, I think some of you guys were following along the last time I did a video on CRM and, and you kind of know where I'm going with this. Um, but for those that don't, I'll explain to you what, what I did here. So, okay. So I'm going to go back to the weekly with CRM and I'm going to give you guys the breakdown again. Okay. So first and foremost, get a pen and a pad out. Let's do a pen and pad alert right now. I want to try to go in a lot of detail here for you guys with CRM. I really, really want to give you a lot of detail. So please get the pen and the pad out right now. Get your books ready. Get your notes. Let's let me discuss this one in detail. Okay. So if I look at CRM on the weekly, we can see that obviously this thing is in an uptrend. There's no question behind behind that. And the first time it came on my scanner was right here with this inside bar. Okay, so this inside bar came up and I was interested in the trade because it was, again, pressing up against his previous all-time high. So this is what I did. I drew, I, I drilled down, I drilled down. This is why I call the book the drill down. We drill, we drill, we drill, we drill, we, we drill. We got a jackhammer. So I go down to the daily right there and now this is what I did. So the first bar came in here with this hammer, okay? And then the next bar came in inside bar. So I did the same thing as I did on AMD. I took calls when we broke that high and I got two weeks out. And these calls, I put in full risk, meaning whatever happened to these calls, it could either go to zero or it could go to 10X. That's what I'm looking for. So I'm going to tell you guys right now, I got the 280 calls, October 15th expiry, which basically expires tomorrow. But I... I got it last week, right? And I got them at $2.51. So once we triggered the high, notice that I only played the bullish side here. I only played the bullish side because I'm expecting us to potentially break back into new all-time highs. That's a strategy that I like to use a lot. So we had this candle break down. It broke down and then it came back up and then it filled me on the way up. So right away, the next candle, I made about 50% return on the calls. And my plan was I'm going to hold it. I'm going to hold it to either zero or 10X, right? So there we go. So when it came back here, I was actually down money. And then this week came in, boom, 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 boom. And that's, you know, that's why you need patience with trading. So I achieved my plan. You see that? CRM, new all-time highs. That was my whole plan. So the, the options that I got, they went from $2.51 to $10.20. So almost a five times. All right. And that's the power of drilling down, guys. So hit me with the two real quick. If you guys, if you guys are following along, you guys took notes there. Hit, do you guys understand what, I, what I'm saying there, guys? We start off with a range. We dissect that range. We have a thesis. We're trying to get back to all-time highs. And then we drill down. We drill down and we try to get in at a better price instead of chasing okay i i really want to i really want to talk to you guys about this i really want to stress this to you guys i don't want to chase something so if i wait so how many times be honest with me how many times have you guys seen analysis where it's like okay we're gonna get in when it breaks the all-time high because then we're gonna look for the squeeze we're gonna get in when it breaks the all-time high how many times have you seen that like on Twitter or wherever, wherever you learn from, how many times have you seen it? Like the, the chart, the charter or the, the educational materials like, Oh, well now you want to come in when we break the all time high. How many times hit me with the three. If that sounds familiar to you, hit me with the three. If that sounds familiar to you. And the, so now here's the problem. How many of you actually trade options? Hit me with the four if you trade options. Hit me with the four if you trade options. The problem with buying options as they're making brand new highs is that the premium is going to be super expensive. That's the problem. So it's not about if the if this trade works or it doesn't work. 
It's about when it does work, are you going to be paying a very high price? Are you going to be overpaying? That's the question. You want to get things for a good deal. You want to get things for a good deal. So let me give you guys an example. Okay. So make sure, make sure the pen and the pad is still there. Don't put it away. Don't put it away yet. Don't put it away yet. Right here on this inside bar, what happened to the option premiums? What happened to the option premiums? On this inside bar, the option premiums, they got decayed. Decayed. So I came in and I got it for $2.16. Or wait, let me check it again. I don't want to confuse it with AMD. $2.51. So we have an inside bar. Things are chopping around. Like, do you guys see? Do you see how small this bar is? Look at that. This bar, the range of this bar, guys, is $2.30. Compared to the previous bar, the range on the previous bar was nine dollars so essentially when that range shrinks i'm gonna get a better deal on the options okay so what i did there guys is if i'm getting in here i'm getting it at two dollars and fifty cents if I wait for the mainstream and I wait until it breaks the previous high, the same options are already over $10. That is, so it's about also knowing what type of instrument you are trading. If you're trading options, you have to look for good deals. This is why I created the drill down. I created the drill down method, guys. Look, I created this book because I actually trade options. I'm actually trading it. So I can tell you the truth. But if you go to somebody else, they're going to be like, listen, oh, yeah, we break this high here. You want to get the options. But guess what? The options are already at $10. So now you have to put $1,000 risk right up front. And that's not safe for a lot of you guys with small accounts. That's not safe. All right. So hit me with a four if you understand you know, if you understand what we went through there, hit me with a four if that makes sense. And the other thing to mention here, guys, is this is the Trading Wars Nirvana pattern, right? This is the Trading Wars Nirvana pattern. So inside followed by outside bar, that's a Nirvana. You could see we had one before, which was a fail. And then this one came in, bam. So I really love the Nirvana pattern. That's why I created it, okay? So it's not just about getting into a trade, but it's about getting into a trade with a good deal. So his brother says, using this method actually made me profitable on drafting this week. I used the IB from Tuesday to enter. Let's see what this brother did. There we go. So this brother took this IB here on DraftKing. I think I took this one too. I don't know why my order is here. I think I took it. And he made some money on that too. So good stuff. All right, so now let's go Let's go to the picks from yesterday. Let's talk to them, NVIDIA, MU, Twitter, and Activision Blizzard. So if we look at NVIDIA from yesterday, we had a double inside bar pattern. So this is why I always tell you guys, double inside bar pattern is so important. It's rare. It doesn't happen. Look, the last one happened in... June 2021, the, then before that, December 2020. It doesn't happen too often, and it gives you an indication that something's about to go down. Okay? So, brother, Jonathan said he caught Moderna with the same type of play. Good job, brother. Yeah. So, we know something's going down. We have two days of going sideways. If you look back, we actually have three days of going sideways. Option premiums are getting hit in DK. We go down to the five-minute chart, and here we go. So I'm going to hit the replay. Okay. So I'm going to show you guys something about Fibonacci and gaps. Very important. Okay. So 
we're going to have to do another pen and pad alert. Get the pen and the pad out again because I'm going to show you something very important. So here's the first five-minute bar. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a Fibonacci from the close to the high of the first five-minute bar. I don't trade anything in the pre-market, guys. I don't do that. That's not that's not my style. So here we go. First five-minute bar, we're going to draw a Fib from – if you. We're going to draw a fib from the close to the high. Now watch closely. So the first five-minute bar, we break down. The opening range breakout fails. But what I've been, what I've always been telling you guys, halfway mark of the gap. Here's the gap. This is the gap. Here's the high. Here's the close. This is the gap. The halfway mark of the gap is always important because that is where Fibonacci's can load in. So right here, guys, one of the old strategies I used to use with the gaps is just buying on that 50, okay? And look at this. That's it, all right? So that's your Fibonacci on the gap. Now watch this. Now I'm going to talk about the morning leg from my book on Fibonacci. Look at this now. So we had that gap fib. Now we had the morning leg fib. We take it from the low to the high for the morning. And look, another 50. Do you see that? So now, pay attention, pay attention. Here was the first 50. Here was the second 50. And there is another one. Watch this now. From this sequence leg, another one. But this one came just a little bit deeper into the 618. All right? That's how you know when you have a gap like this, is there's going to be algorithms all over it, especially for a name like NVIDIA. So you got you to gotta have those tools ready to go. You got to have your tools ready to go. So here's your 50 on the gap. Here's your 50 on the morning leg Fibonacci from my book. Here's the sequence Fibonacci leg from my book. And then check this out. The fractals lose this one, one-to-one. -one, and then here was the big star boy, Nirvana. Here's the trading wars Nirvana right there. Even if you miss all of this, you take a shot. You take a shot with the Nirvana guys. That takes you straight into the close. Straight into the close. Beautiful. All right. Hit me with a four, if you guys understand that. You okay with that? Hit me with a four. And I'm just gonna push it, put this out here, guys. I don't know if you guys remember, but I have a free indicator. I have a free indicator, guys. Look right here. Free indicators, guys. Here's my here's my indicators. Right here. Make sure you have my indicator on your chart, guys. I'm giving it to you for free. Make sure you have my indicator on your chart. I created this for free. I could sell it for $500, $1,000. I could do whatever. No. I'm going to put it on your chart so you can learn. You can watch and you can learn. Okay? Don't pay me anything. Do not give me your money until the day that you gain value from me. The day that you've gained value from me is the day you give me money. That is the only time. You do not give me money until you say, Rich, I learned something. I made some money. I, I, I'm a better trader. That's what I want. I want to give you value. And if you can't get value from me, that's totally fine. Okay, here we go again. Here we go again. Let's go. So MU, here we go. Daily chart. Inside bar. So we already know premiums were hit. They were decayed. Okay. We come down to the five. Hit the replay. All right. First bar comes in right there. This is a significant gap from the close, guys. Okay. Look at this gap. So we're going to do the same thing. Take it from the close. Bring it up to the high. Okay. We tag the 50 there. Opening range is here. Let's, then we break down with that opening range. We have a nice little push. That's that's a decent push for an opening range breakout. And then again, you see the algos coming in. You see them stepping in. Look, on the 50, on the 618, they're here. They're buying, they're buying, they're buying, they're buying. There's orders sitting here. And if you want to be really conservative, if you want to be really, really conservative, you can buy into the gap and have a stop loss below the previous day's low somewhere down here. So you'd be very, very conservative, all right? So here we go. 
So let me just get rid of that. So there we go. Boom, boom. All right. Inside bar. Okay. This one, another false breakout. Let me fast forward here, guys. So for MU, I would definitely say that it the, the fractals today, the fractal bars, like the five-minute inside bars and stuff, were very hard. The fibs were on point. And I'm going to show you guys another thing here. This is what we call the afternoon leg. So the afternoon leg in Fibonacci is basically after the first hour to two hours, you want to take the Fibonacci. This is what I call the afternoon leg from the book. You take the Fibonacci from the low to the high of the whole day. So from the low to the high of the whole day. So the whole range. You're not looking for any sequence legs. You're not looking for any small legs. You're looking for the whole day. And this one might be easier for some of you guys to deal with because it's just the low and the high of the day. Now check this out. We come, we tag the 382, the 386, sorry. We put in a nice doji. But this is the pattern that I'm talking about, guys. Here it is again. Trading Wars Nirvana at your service. Beautiful, guys. Beautiful Trading Wars Nirvana. We have that. Pull back here, 382 Nirvana, guys. That's a good, even if, guys, you could still hit these for some scallops, guys. You could you could hit these for some base hits. Take a base hit here, take a base hit there, take a base hit, you know. Whatever you do, as long as you're locking in, move that stop loss up, you'll be good to go. Right? This one was definitely harder. I would I'll definitely say that. N NVIDIA was clean. MU, not so much. So that's fine. Let's move on. Twitter. Same thing. Here we go. Daily chart, inside bar close. We know that the option premiums have been hit. We're trying to come in now and take advantage of that. So let's. here we have a gap. Same thing. We have a gap. Okay. So where's the range of the previous day? Starts back here. Bring it up here. Okay. So there's the range of the previous day. Now check this out. So this, this previous day's range expansion is another concept I talk about in the book. I like using this more for targets. I like using this like this. You see these targets on the way up? Notice how the high of the day is a 786 range extension of the previous day. It's a projection. A lot of times, guys, the next day, if we make a move, it's just going to be expansion of the previous day's range. And the reason why is because it's algorithm driven. It's robot driven. So the robot is going to say, all right, 78.6% of the previous day's range is the target. Because that's how you can program an algorithm. You can program it based on percentages and based on numbers and Fibonacci. So I just wanted to throw that up there to show you guys. Okay. So what we're going to do, the same thing. Hit the bar replay. First bar comes in. We're going to go ahead and we're going to take the Fibonacci from the close up to the high. Next. Okay. So this one right here, guys, we bear this opening range breakout was a fail, complete fail. We just come in, we we barely break that low and we turn around. This was this was almost a tweezer, tweezer bottom. And you could see right out, you could see from this guys right here is this this fib, this algo is not even letting it dip to the 50. It's just so powerful, it's willing to buy at these higher prices. And when you have that, you have so now let's say you had an order on the 50, it doesn't fill. So now you have to say, okay, this algo is strong. So I have to adapt. I have to adapt. I have to look for a different setup. Right. And sometimes here's another thing. If it doesn't, if it doesn't come to you, if the trade doesn't come to you, then you just move on to the next one. All right. And then I just wanted to point this out again, guys. Look which pattern shows up again. Trading Wars Nirvana pattern. Look at that. Done. Right there. Nirvana comes in. Take that. One to one. Base hit again. Very reliable. Like, I I, I am, I beg you guys, take my chart, my indicators, my patterns, and go and back test them. Go and test them and see. Like, see for yourself. Don't just listen to me. See for yourself. Do simulation trading. Do paper trading. Back test it. Put it through 100 trades and see what the results are. I've put my, I put hours and hours, and I can't even count them anymore. Thousands of hours I've put behind building these things. 
And that's this is what I'm trying to share with the world. So do the back testing, guys, and check it out. Okay. All right. So there we go. Twitter. So, like, you know, my goal every day is pretty much this. I want to play triggers, two to three fractal trades on the five, and two to three fractal trades on the 15, and I'm going to put in one or two fibs. That's my goal. Because I want to spread out my style and not be too concentrated in one thing. Because you'll see, like, some days fractal trades are making money. Some days triggers so you want to have a range of tools when you're at my level. When you are learning, when you're learning, you want to focus on one, you want to hit it 100 times. That's what I keep telling you guys. One, hit it 100 times. I'm going to do 100 opening range breakouts. I'm going to do 150% Fibonacci. I'm going to do 100 Nirvana patterns. Just do it 100 times because you need to build the muscle memory and the skills. Okay? All right, last one here, Activision Blizzard. I wanted to show you guys something really important on this chart. This one is actually going to blow your mind. And I, I was actually analyzing this a little bit earlier. So hit me with a seven if you want to if you want to dig into this one at Activision Blizzard. Hit me, hit me with a seven if you're excited. I'm going to show you something that's crazy. It's actually crazy. Okay, good. You guys ready? All right, now check this out. So as you guys know, I have trade plans available for the members. I have trade plans, okay? So these are supplemental trade plans that can help your trades. And um, they're pretty much Fibonacci based. So I'm just going to show the trade plan for Activision Blizzard. The entry was So I'm just going to put this. I just want to walk you guys through this. And so I always post these trade plans the night before. So you have, you can automate them in your broker if you want to. You can have alerts set up so you know, you know, you're, you're paying attention. Okay. And then what is the target? 76.21. All right. Now watch this. We are going to go down to a, first of all, I want to hit the market replay. To really see this trade play out, you have to go down to a seconds. Okay. So let's watch this. I'm on the 15 second chart. First 15 seconds comes in. Watch this. This is within 15 seconds. We open below the trigger. We are filled on the trigger and we hit the target all within 15 seconds. And the only way you're physically possible of hitting this trade is having the condition, not the conditional, the automated orders the night before. That's the only way. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. And then check this out. We're on the 15 second. Watch this. Done. You see that, guys? This is crazy. Look at that. Stopped out right there. You hit the target and we reverse. This is within 45 seconds. And it's all... Guys, I'm, what I'm trying to show you here, okay. What I'm trying to show you here, guys, is my target is a Fibonacci target. My entry is a Fibonacci. Everything is based on a Fibonacci. What I'm trying to visually show you here, guys, is this. When the algorithm hits the fibs that they want, and they get in, and they take the target, and they're out. That's it. It's done. And you can't see it unless you're doing... Unless you're detailed into the chart like me, guys, you can then you can see. Wait, this al these algorithms they're hitting these fibs. These algorithms is hitting these fibs, and they're in and they're out. High probability, and they're gone. You can't even see this on a one minute candle. You won't even be able to tell what happened. 
So I was just, I was just so like taken away today. I was just taken away today with, man, like these fibs, these algos, man, they're sneaky, man. They're crazy. So hit me with a nine if your mind is blown off of that. Hit me with a nine if your mind is blown, blown with that. And that's what I'm pretty much trying to do with spy. Every single day. Because one thing with spy is you're not going to have liquidity problems. You're not going to like, you'll be able to get filled because it's so much, there's so much volume. There's so much shares, there's futures, all of that. All right. And that's where I want to leave it at today, guys. I just want to stop right there because I just want to, I just want to open your mind. I want you to be creative as traders. I want you to think outside the box. I want you to see the details. Okay. I don't want you to be buying breakouts into all time highs and buying. I don't want you to be buying when I'm selling. When I'm selling, you should not be buying my shares. Leave that to the people that are ignorant, that don't want to learn. But you guys that are here, the 150 people here that are here, drill down. Drill down, guys. Drill down. Get a better entry. Think about the risk to reward. All right? That's how I'm going to leave it tonight. I'm so grateful. I mean, I've seen some of my numbers dropping. Um, I think it has to do with just, you know, like the market's been up and down. But I'm going to be here for the people that are willing to listen. And I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. I love being here and just educating you. I really do. I really do. And I'm just going to keep being here. Whether we have 50 people, or 100 people, 300 people, don't matter. It does not matter because this is my purpose. This is what I'm here on this planet to do. All right. So thank you very much. I'm looking forward to tomorrow. I have my trigger trades ready. They're all ready to roll, already posted, already to rock and roll. Hopefully, we close out the week real strong. I really hit big this week with um, AMD and CRM, and I hit big on a few other names, but I'm going to probably do like a more detailed swing trade recap um, on that. And uh, hopefully, hopefully, we keep going. The main thing is try not to give back too much money tomorrow. Like, you know, let's say I made $10,000 this week, let's say. So I'm only willing to give back about $1,000 of that. If if I lose more than that, then I'm doing something wrong. I'm doing something wrong. Yes. And the last thing, guys, before we go, this is what we're going to do. Boom. My brother here, Jonathan, again, with a 10. Much love to you, Rich. You're going to see the trigger trades. Yes, brother. Check them out, man. I love the trigger trades. I'm always trying to improve the trigger trades. I'm really trying because the trigger trades, you can put them in the night before. So this is what we're going to do before I go today. This is what we're going to do. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Everything that I'm telling you here, I personally know somebody that will charge you $5,000 for this. I know, I know the people in this community that will do that. But I'm not one of those people. So please comment, like, and subscribe. And this is another thing that I need you guys to do. When I... When I close the stream and we end this broadcast, leave a comment on this video on this. Which type of trading method do you want me to focus more on? Which one gets you excited? Are you, do you love when I talk about the Fibonacci? Do you love when I talk about the triggers? Do you love the fractal trades? Do you love the drill down? You tell me, tell me what you want. Do you want me to write a book on how I trade SPY every single day? You tell me what you want when we close the broadcast. You tell me what you want and I'll make it happen for you because you are the people that care. The people that are here right now are the people that really care. And I'm going to make sure that I give you service. Whatever you need from me, I'll make it happen for you guys. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good night and good luck tomorrow, friends.